It has become a tradition in the Olympic year to gather in New York City. And so that is where we are today, 21 weeks away from London at the one and only Madison Square Garden. In 1976, the royalty of the sport started to make their mark in this building underneath that signature roof when Nadia Komanich put up a perfect 10 for her coach Bella Caroli and then duplicated that in Montreal. In 1984, Mary Lou Retton became an Olympic American trailblazer when she won in New York and then followed it up in Los Angeles. In 2004, from Plano, Texas came Carly Patterson. She won in Madison Square Garden and then won in the Olympic Games. And from the very same gym came the daughter of an Olympian, Nasta Lukin. She came here, won in New York City, and then won the all-around Olympic gold. And today in New York City, we wonder, is DeWitt Michigan's Jordan Weber going to follow in their path? NBC Sports welcomes you to the 2012 AT&T American Cup. Great crowd assembled underneath that signature roof in the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. Al Troutwig along with Olympic gold medalist Tim Daggett, Elfie Schlegel, Andrea Joyce, there's Jordan Weaver. She is the reigning world champion, so this is supposed to be a great day for her. And a few minutes ago on the vault, she delivered like the champion she is. Well, she does the hardest vault being done in the world. And this was actually what sealed the deal for her to win that world title just a few months ago in Japan. This vault, and I gotta tell you, she has looked like, to use a, a, a statement that her coach, John Gettard said, like a chiseled piece of steel ever since she's been here in New York. And can you think of a better way to start off your Olympic year? That right there, best ball I've ever seen her do. What makes it so difficult? Well, she does this extra half turn. There is her coach, John Gettard. She does this extra half turn, and that half turn alone makes it a blind landing, which is a lot harder, and it also adds a full seven tenths over what rivals like Komova from Russia, who came in second at the Worlds. But she's got great height, great form, and look at that, just the smallest little slide forward on the landing. And the vault is getting better and better every time we see her perform this. And where it's improving is right here on the landing. That is so, so important. But the, the ironic thing is, it, there are top gymnastics countries around the world that are just praying to have one person capable of doing that. And, and it's a struggle. Look at the muscles in her forearms absolutely rippling as she applies the sweatband. A 9.6 execution for the first score today above 16. A 16.1 for Jordan Weber. And this is the American Cup after all. And we have an American story at the top because not only did Jordan Weber beat 16, Ali Raisman from Massachusetts also did. So they are tied. And that is really impressive in a world of tenths to be exactly the same. Now, Romania, we have seen them again at the height of the sport, and we have seen them fall off the cliff. Where are they in 2012? Well, they have a very big uphill battle. You know, they finished out of the medals at the last World Championships. I'm pretty sure not in over 30 years have they come away from an Olympics or a World Championships with zero medals. This is an international competition, as you can tell. Adding mystery to what we'll see in London in July and August is the fact that China and Russia are not here. Without question. But you see that, that little one right there as Diana Kalaru is helping Larissa, her, her young little teammate, prepare the bars. The Romanians like them very differently because you see what's hanging around her wrist. They don't use grips, the Romanians. It's like j just about every gymnast in the world it's uses these, tape. these big grips. And it's, it's like just a, I don't even know. We, but it's, it's, 
Tim, the strength of the, the Romanian team as a whole over the years, over the World Championships we've been covering together, we've always said, watch out for those Romanians because what they have is a close-knit group of young ladies who train together, live together, eat together, study together. And I tell you, they know each other better than their own parents. And they, do, they are workhorses. They will fight to the bitter end. And this young one will only move up uneven bars historically a weak event for the Romanians Calaro not quite as good as her teammate here but like you said Elfie at an Olympics you can never count them out and they're hoping to rebuild oh. this team with the two athletes they brought right here at the American Cup and that actually is not going to get a very good score at all. Well, I certainly hope the Romanian women came through the main entrance of Madison Square Garden where there is a huge photograph of Nadia Comaneci. Now, on the men's side, the American men are represented by two. Danelle Leva, a Cuban immigrant, and John Orozco from the Bronx. This was earlier, and he's been part of the leaders, Tim. Yes, he has, and he started great, actually. And this is the guy that was favored coming into this, the highest ranked American gymnast in the world right now. And he started very well. But watch his hands. They do not get completely around the pommel horse. He puts his knuckles on the pommel and he is off. And that's a point off. So the standings right now, Danelle Leva is in the worst place you don't want to be. You do not want to be fourth. And that is where he is right now. Uh, a little bit less than three tenths and now John Orozco is currently in sixth and he's got some climbing to do as well to get near the podium so that is the story right now and for John Orozco it is going to be a major battle for the rest of the day Larissa Hjordak of Romania third after the first rotation Kalaru received a 13.2 that's bad that's bad not a good score but this young lady, she is the first Romanian that I can remember in decades that can really swing bars, and they need her. That That's entire... exciting for this team. Yeah. That's important for this team. She was just a junior last year. This She's is her debut. She's doing some improvising here, though. What do you mean? Well, she wanted to connect all of those pirouettes together, and she did not. This is a big release combination right here. Beautifully done. But she does swing bars, and that is the major criticism that Romania gets. It's all muscled, everyone says. She swings bars, and she is unquestionably the future of Romanian gymnastics. And for them to get on the podium, I firmly believe she has to be on the team, and she needs to be the leader. We will get her score in a moment. Next up is... Jordan Weber, again, the world champion gold medalist. It was a dreamy world championships for the United States overall, really setting themselves up from a confidence standpoint for London in the, the best way possible. And you wonder, Tim, if, if there's any part of her synapses that even flash back to what happened here at the AT&T American Cup last year. Well, yeah, actually what happened here was not good on this event. She's battling with Mustafana, the world champion. Look at this release. And still to this day, I've gone back, Al, and I have looked at this so many times, I don't know why she didn't hold onto the bar. Her hands look completely around the bar. Sometimes what can happen is you think you got it, the big release is over, and you're thinking about the next move, and you're not in the moment, and you find yourself standing on the ground. And Tim, I think, I think after... Marta Caroli watching every move. Nasta Lukin, by the way, she's thinking of being part of the London story. She is trying to come back. And the one event where Nastia would contribute to the team, of course, is uneven bars. It has been a weak spot for the Americans, but I guarantee you, she will hit this event. She is a different athlete after winning that world championship title. Oh, oh my goodness! 
Well, she was trying to do it not good, but great. And sometimes when you try to be exact in a handstand, you can have that problem. This where she missed last year. How bad is what happened? No, I would say it's at least at least three tenths. And to be perfectly honest, if they want to, I think they could take up to six tenths of a point because there are two separate deductions there. She's in a huge arch, which they can take a deduction for. Seen in my life, outstanding. So let's look at this here, and you'll you'll see that. She tries to go directly to handstand on this. Watch, she is dead on. It's awesome, but a little bit I, over. Wow, she I arches. can't believe she pulled, and pulled that, that back. That separation of her legs, that, that could be up to five tenths of a point, and the arch could be up to three tenths. I think that she's gonna get away with a little bit less than that. That is amazing that she pulled that yeah. back and didn't fall over on the other side of the bar. But you know, this really has been, you know, Jordan's gotten much better on bars, but you know, she fell last year at the American Cup on this. And really, at the World Championships, it was the only place where she struggled was the all-around finals on the uneven bars. It wasn't a disaster, but she definitely gets a little bit uptight on this event. So some of the American gymnasts here today at Madison Square Garden have to try and overcome a couple of uh-ohs. We will have her score in a moment. When we come back, we are going to have the story of overcoming adversity to get to this day. It's the story of John Orozco, and it is a compelling Bronx tale. I got Whitney right here. Give it up for Whitney. The AT&T American Cup is brought to you by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. By Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's and by ADT Security Services, always there. Today in New York City is not unlike many days in the life of John Orozco from the Bronx in New York. It's about overcoming adversity, and his road to this American Cup is a lot like the streets of New York, filled with human potholes. I just want to say thank you to everyone that came here. Family, friends, your all family. It wouldn't have been possible without every one of you. Oh, I love him. I don't have to act like I love him. I love him. <laughs> totally embarrass him. Gymnastics in the Bronx? It's basketball, it's football, it's baseball, soccer. I didn't really have that many friends. Kids were not accepting around me. When was the last time anybody from New York has gone into gymnastics? It's not a choice on the table here in the Bronx. It's just not. Obstacles. John Orozco knows almost everyone. Start with where he's from. The Bronx? Are you kidding? Next came money. For the first three years, we were making out okay. Then we started falling behind. He would hear us talking about the mortgage and paying and how we were going to make the bills. And he went to the gym and he asked the owner and the coach, can I work? I knew we were struggling. You know, that's not something kids should know. Whatever I can do for my family was the main priority. And he got in the car and he said he had that pay the mortgage. <laughs> What'd he do? For him to step up that way, it was, it was big. It's still big, you know? We don't have riches, but we have a great family. As John moved up the ladder, the progression was impressive. But then, on a very important day, he had to deal with life. I had won the first day of juniors, and then I was going to compete the senior competition. I got the phone call from my oldest son, and he said, something's wrong with Dad. I picked up the phone and said, Dad, what's wrong? And he says, I might not be here when you get here. They said, you probably won't make it back in time. It's bad. You know, my dad had a stroke when I was out there competing. So I told him, he says, let's go home. And I said, your father would want you to finish. John was such a professional, you would have never known. He was just out there, he did what he had to do, and that was it. I won the all-around competition. I dedicated that to my father. Looking at him now, is, it's a remarkable recovery. 
In the end, it was good. John just learned to be a stronger person for it. John's rise was a dream, driven by the sport, but supported by world championships and the Olympics. Then came the pain. 2010 rolls around, competing in my first senior national meet. Everything was going great, you know, in the competition. So I, I went to do my vault and I, I felt something wrong immediately in the air. I landed, I took one step, I said, wait, what was that? I start, tried to take another step, I said, oh no, this is bad. And when I saw John sit down, I knew it was bad. They uh, confirmed that I had a 90% Achilles tear. I worked so hard for this and this is what happens. Why? I told him, you know, John, if father made it, you can do it. You can't quit. I never quit on you, you can't quit on me. I got hurt, there's nothing I can do about it. I said, you know what, I'll just improve on the weaknesses that I had, not involving my foot. I had work to do on pommels. If he hits this routine right here, he is going to be on the 2011 world team. I think that does it. I'm finally here, I'm finally where I want to be. Finally made the team. I finally medaled at the Visa Championship senior competition. Finally going to World Championships. It's all, it's all happening now. Double pike and a great landing. This is gonna move him up. I can't thank you guys enough. This is why I give it everything I have. Not only for myself, but for everyone that's helped me. I'm not gonna let your efforts and my efforts, you know, be in vain. So, thanks. From Sammy's Fish Box on City Island come the brothers Eric, Manny, and Jason. Sister Jessica's probably not far away. The mom is Damaris. The dad is William, who obviously overcame the stroke. And he has not overcome that Achilles injury totally, but this had nothing to do with that. No, it did. He was totally off balance on that. And as a parent, it is crushing. And now mom and dad have left their seats maybe they either want to watch from a different spot or can't watch so it's a lot like life and it's amazing we're talking about John Orozco right now and he's looking up at us it's always a little bit of a strange one he's getting set to to mountain waiting's part of the game in gymnastics okay Alexandra Raisman in a tie after the first rotation with Jordan Weber she can break that tie now. Well, what a great start to that competition. And that was a brand new vault for Allie. This event, however, not her strongest. It's her lowest scoring event. But if she does what she's capable of doing, what Allie does so well is hit her routines. Little bit of form deduction, though, on just about all of the turns. And you see those legs separate. This is not her event. She knows it. Tucked up the knees right there. Here's her dismount. A solid routine for Allie, but she needs a 14.833 to take the lead from Weber, and in my book, no way. We shall see as the judges tabulate. Here's Danell Leva. His parents came to the United States when he was one year old. Stopped in South America, went all over that continent, and then finally made their way to Miami. They now live in Homestead, and that is where he trains. Difficult ball for him. Oh! <laughs> got that. Yeah, but that, I'm very surprised. He did not do the vault that he was planning to do. Maybe they made a last minute calculation. Well, Dad seems very happy, Tim. He does, he does, but I'm, I'm certain that, that they thought that he's just going to stay clean. He did a vault that is four tenths lower in start value than he has been doing for the last year or so. Usually does an extra half turn on this, but this is great. Look at how open his body is. Just that slide, slide, that slight slide back, but. Yin Alvarez is his stepfather, both he and Danelle's mom were gymnasts in Cuba before coming to the United States. You know, yesterday in practice, Danelle was saying, gosh, I'm so pumped. I just wanted to be here right now. And what he was talking about was London. He is so ready to get that going. 
A 15.633. So is that good, great, or not so? No, it's good. And the execution score is great. If he had done his other vault, it would have been a little bit lower, but... You saw in the uh, special look at John Orozco's life to this point that Achilles injury was 90%. That is a major injury. It is. And how does it play into this vault? Well, it happened on this event right here on vaulting. So he's doing a completely different vault. He's not landing backwards. He's going to land forward, which takes a lot of pressure off of that leg. Yesterday, he told me that his ankle, his Achilles, was, it was killing him. He said to, to me today, right before the meet began, it feels 100% better. And it was a good ball. It was a good ball. Just the step forward on the landing. He is relieved to have that one done and over with. He was sixth coming into this rotation, so he needs some major numbers. We can tell you that Ali Raisman of Needham, Massachusetts, 14-3-3-3, not good enough to take the lead. No, and they got, the, they got that right. Just a little bit of sloppiness in the air. That step, that's a three-tenth of a point step, but... The thing that both John Orozco and Danelle Leva have at this point is they are going, in my opinion, to both of their strongest events, parallel bars and high bar. They're both great there. 15.766, nicely done for John Orozco of the Bronx, just north of the borough of Manhattan and the home of the Yankees. As he's performing in the home of the Knicks and the Rangers. So he's looking up at the scoreboard, sees his number, no emotions on his face. He's just fighting and scratching like he has his whole life to try and get onto the podium here. And believe me, it could happen, you know. Uh, not only is he capable of putting up two really strong exercises on parallel bars and high bar. He's a world finalist on high bar. He's, he's unbelievable on parallel bars. But he could put a little pressure on some of these guys, and who knows? You never know what's going to happen, especially on high bar. And Aleva with that uh, familiar sidekick, the towel. It's with him everywhere he goes. Sometimes he lives underneath it. <laughs> yeah, the world championships, I swear, he like never came out. It was like a shroud. <laughs> uh, here's someone who can probably recite the roster of the Toronto Maple Leafs <laughs> from Ontario, Victoria Moores. Elfie, how's the Canadian effort in women's gymnastics? Well, they're thrilled, to be honest with you. They're thrilled to be back uh, at the Olympic Games with a full women's team, which is not what we can say about the men's team. But for Victoria, she was part of that effort this past January at the test event in London. So she's already had a chance to compete in the O2 arena. She actually won a silver medal on the floor exercise where she shines, I believe. This is one of her more difficult event she's hoping to just get by but she's using american cup for sheer experience she's trying to get as many international events under her belt before they select that team but she's got some skills like right there super hard combination and she was struggling oh, with that, that in warm-up very similar to what we saw from jordan weber but jordan somehow able to hang on and for Victoria, a very, very big error. Broke form and also the change of direction. Like you mentioned, Tim, she has some good skills. She's just 15 years old and hasn't had a whole lot of international competition at all. So, you know, you got to learn from these mistakes and just make it better the next time you're out. You know, that's exactly what her coach, Elvira Saidi, said to me. She said, you know, if, if things go great, it's great experience. If we make some mistakes, then we learn, we learn sooner. The women are on the move, and so are the men. Jordan Weber and Ali Raisman lead the 2012 AT&T American Cup. We'll get to the standings and continue in New York after this. Jordan Weber is the leader here at the 2012 AT&T American Cup. She leads her teammate, Ali Raisman, by half a point as the women move now to the second half of their competition, the third rotation coming on the always precarious balance beam. Over on the men's side, we have some great American stories, and no one from Ukraine has ever won the American Cup. Mikola Komi Nikolai Kuksenkov has the lead. 
over Great Britain's Daniel Purvis. Danell Leva remains off the podium in fourth, and John Orozco from the Bronx still has a half a point of coming back to do. Hi, everybody. I'm Al Trowick, along with Olympic gold medalist Tim Daggett and Elfie Schlegel. And Tim, here we are, just months away, 21 weeks away from the London Olympics, and you're reminded to never take anything for granted. For the world champion comes here, everyone thinks she's going to win the American Cup, and then all of a sudden there's a moment on the uneven bars, and you say, okay, that's a fast. Yeah, and you know what? She's actually had a few too many of those moments. She fell at last year's American Cup on that event, and it was the only place where she didn't look invincible at the last world championships was uneven bars in the all-around final. She's a tremendous athlete, but she's got to get her nerves in check there. Elfie, no... China, no Russia. What does that do to your assessment of where this is on the calendar? Well, I think what most people say is it's just too early in the calendar year for international competitions. I think what happened last year when um, uh, Jordan won the American Cup over our Mustafina, they, they were quite frankly angry about that and they said we're not coming back. So perhaps they're not putting as much importance on the American Cup. They're going to focus on the other events. But for the Americans, they want everyone to know that they are here and they're here to dominate the start of the year. Jordan Weber, of course, craves to be the fourth. Only three before her. They would be Nastia Lukin, Carly Patterson, and Mary Lou Retton, who were joined on the Today set yesterday with Matt Lauer together for the first time ever in the same place. Maybe to talk about that in a little bit more, here's Andrea Joyce. All right, Al, I'm with Nastia Lukin, the reigning Olympic champion. Talked to you dozens of times since 2008, never really ready to make a decision about whether you would make a comeback. You made the decision to come back in the fall. What tipped it? You know, I had these visions of me being in London, whether or not I was competing, and sitting in the stands watching Team USA walk onto the floor thinking, what if? And those two words just scared me. You know, I didn't want to have the regret of thinking, what if I would have tried? So how is it going? I mean, you had this very cool red carpet life, and now you're back in the gym with all the chalk and the dust and the sweat. I mean, what, how is it going, and how would you mark your progress? Are you where you need to be? Yeah, I definitely think that I'm making progress, and you know, it's not easy. You know, it's not easy taking time off and getting back into the gym, especially after the different lifestyle that I had. Is it harder than you thought? Yeah, a little bit. You know, I, I definitely didn't think it'd be a walk in the park, but it is. Ha it has been hard, but you know, it's definitely motivating being out here this weekend and watching these girls too. You watch these girls and you see the talent out here and the landscape very quickly. How do you like your chances of making the team, and will that be enough? <laughs> I hope so. You know, it's all I can do is give 100% and not have any regrets. And, um, you know, bars has always been my strongest event, so I hope so. All right. A lot of folks would love to see you back out there. Best of luck. Thank you so much, Andy. Al? It doesn't take much imagination to know that once you get out of the gym, it's so hard to get back in it. Jordan Weber has the lead at the AT&T American Cup. Back live in New York City, often New Yorkers say, what color is the Empire State Building going to be illuminated in tonight? We'll have to wait and see. This is the 2012 at t American Cup in Midtown Manhattan at the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. So often in history, a great stage for an American gymnast to come and win and set the stage for an Olympic follow-up. On the balance beam are the women. But the one that started it off was a Romanian. Nadia Comaneci in 1976 won this and went on to become a worldwide icon. And this is why Larissa is so great. Look at that opening skill. Very few women in the world performing that in combination. That is risky as well as a double turn. I have so much respect for these athletes who take the risk of doing skills like turns, double turns on beam. The Romanians just keep breeding great beam workers. Something in the way that they train this apparatus unlike any other event. Now Al, can you imagine being 14 years old in Romania, the history and culture of Romanian women's gymnastics and Romanian press proclaims this little girl right here, the new Nadia, hmm. a lot to live up to. Nadia was at the practice yesterday and she came to pick up the two Romanian girls and I just saw her staring at her. Her eyes were just sparkling. Okay, we've seen her do that dismount a lot better in the practices. And you always have to say, Tim, how can anybody be the new Nadia when a perfect 10 is totally impossible? Right. 
Yeah, exactly. Really bad is Nadia Komenich and her coach, Bella Caroli. And there is Dylan. Dylan. That is That's a first. Their little boy. He's got dad's hair. He does. Mm -hmm. He does. Here was the one-time leader, but only trailing by less than a tenth. 66 thousandths of a point. Daniel Purvis. And what news it would be in Great Britain where if just months removed from the London Olympics, he could come to New York City and win something like this. He says it's a dream to compete at Madison Square Garden. He knows about the history. Oh, and a little bit off there. He opened the door. And you know, we've been talking a lot about the Americans, the two men, how they are not at the top of the leaderboard, but with that little mistake right there from Daniel Purvis, I'm telling you, it's possible that after only one rotation, Leva is so good on this event, world champion, he could be your leader. Good, but not, not great, that's for sure. Now balance beam for Jordan Weaver. You know, I talked with her coach right before the meet began, and I said, so, so sum this up for me. And he gets this, this really serious face, and he goes, I got to tell you, it is a heck of a lot more fun to be the one chasing <laughs> than to be the one that everyone in the world is chasing. Now, since last year's World Championships, Jordan's changed some connections on her beam routine. She's made it a lot more difficult. Oh, wow, she fought that. This is the combination that's brand new. A little bit of a break there. Yeah, she actually didn't connect those as she had hoped to, but ridiculously hard. I don't know. Sometimes I think the connections that they're attempting now are just, you know, they're, they're built in potential errors. And right here, another new combination. Aerial cartwheel keeps her leg up in the air to an aerial side. Very difficult. All three of them said she wanted to get it out early, test them out, make sure she sets these routines as she heads to London. And you know, like I said, at the World Championships in the all-around finals, she faltered on the uneven bars kind of opened it up, but then she just rocked balance beam. This is not as dominant of a performance, but going to get a very big number of two feet. Yep. Meet the ground like that. Wow. So, Elfie, is there any way to quantify how much harder this is than what she used at the World Championships? She has increased her value by about four tenths, but what won't happen here is a couple of the breaks that she had. What women's beam is all about is the combinations and keeping the fluidity here. Well, she had a little one break. Hand. Yeah, she does a one-handed backhand spring. And that's the same combination. So look at the toes. They are just yeah. squeezing. squeezing. Not much room for error. But she was nearly off. That was a great save. Has the best form on this that of any gymnast I've ever seen. Just paced it together, toes pointed. But she's not happy with that routine, I can guarantee you. That was, that was just good for Jordan Weaver. America's best, Jordan Weaver from Michigan. I can tell you that Daniel Purvis of Great Britain got a 14.9. Weaver score is upcoming and she gets a smooch from her teammate, Allie Raisman. And this is a huge crowd at Madison Square Garden, and they have come from these gymnastics clubs all over New England and New York and New Jersey and Connecticut. Your deck of Romania, 15.4. Weber on balance beam, a 14.966. So all that difficulty does not help out on the bottom line. We'll be checking the standings when we come back. This is the 2012 AT&T American Cup on NBC Sports from Madison Square Garden in New York.
Back live in Madison Square Garden in two weeks, the road to the London Olympic Games continues as the world champion Team USA takes on the reigning Olympic champion China and other countries in Kellogg's Pacific Rim Championships in two weeks, right here on NBC. You are looking at Nita, Massachusetts' Allie Raisman. She's getting set on the balance beam. We'll get to her in a moment, but first off, our leader, Mikola Nikolai Kuksenkov of Ukraine, trying to break some ground for his nation. They've never been able to win here in New York. Soviet Union dissolving in 1992. And it's actually possible. He's good on parallel bars. He's very good on high bar. And as I have said, if I were a betting man, and you'd ask me consistently who's going to have a mistake-free competition, I would say this guy over every other male competitor in the competition. That sort of sums up his gymnastics. There hasn't been anything that he's done that's been, you know, wow. But it, it's just the, the cleanliness of his moves and his execution. And that's what just keeps inching him up and keeping him at this point in the competition. And another good routine. Once again, not a great routine, but a very solid hit routine. We'll see if that keeps him in the lead. Certainly feels like it would. Waiting all that time, Allie Raisman. And Allie's been here so many times before. I mean, she's a veteran now. She's been to so many more, so many international competitions. And I asked her, what does this one mean to you? What, what do you want to accomplish here? And she said, I really want to show Marta that she can trust me. And she points that out time and time again. She keeps wanting to impress Marta Caroli. <laughs> And I'll tell you, with Jordan's little stumbles on the balance beam and slight misconnections, Allie Raceman, I don't think that she can catch her, but I think that she can close the gap just a little bit. Oh, but that, her hands. Wow. Just brush the beam. You think they... Look, look close. Very close. If they touch the beam, that is very, very bad. She needs a 15-4-6-6. To overtake Jordan Weber, which I don't think, I'm certain she is not going to do. But like I said, could inch a little closer. Just a few too many balance checks. Some of her execution of her leaps not quite as stretched out as they should be. And every time the judges see that, they have the opportunity to take those small deductions. And remember, we tell you about the royalty that has come to the American Cup one and gone on to win. This is a Patterson right here. That dismount, and it is hard. And she did it very, very well. Yeah, that was the highlight of this routine, that dismount. So once again, as she gets a couple of what are you doing? You come to me not really positive yourself. comments, I'm sure, from Mihai. <laughs> Did the hands touch? She leans over. And Whoa, no. Oh, wow. No. That was close, though. Can they use replay, the judges, or no, not? No, well, they, if, if there was an inquiry filed, yeah. But the dismount, as I said, named after 2004 Olympic champion, Carly Patterson, blind. Gosh, she always does that so well. Highest value dismount that anyone performs in the world, and she did it great. So, if it looked to you guys like she touched, and it looked to the judges like she touched, if they don't use replay, she could be very, very... Well, it could, yes. Underscored. It could happen. She, well, just bending over as deeply as she did in that That's pipe is a significant deduction. We go to the parallel bars at the other end of Madison Square Garden. Oleg Vernayev from Ukraine. And unlike his older teammate, he has not been Mr. Consistency. 
Got a lot of potential. Can do some of the most difficult elements in the world being done today, but just a little too young to be able to handle everything he's trying to do. That's part of the reason why he's here at the American Cup, just trying to get a little bit more experience at this international level, counting on him for better results when this team makes their way to London. Very tricky, that combination. I certainly believe he will not be at his best in 2012, but he is someone that everyone's gonna have to keep an eye on because he is talented, strong, quick, and he is gutsy. And in men's gymnastics, if you're not wait willing to take some serious shots, you just cannot hang. His score's not in. Kuksinkov is going to hold the lead in the men's competition. Jordan Weber will check the standings. When we come back, heading to the final rotation with more gymnastics in this rotation still coming up. Jordan Weber and Ali Raisman, American teammates. 1-2 in the standings so far at the 2012 AT&T American Cup. And on two different events today, they have gotten the exact same score, a 16-1 on vaulting, and on balance beam, a 14-9-6-6. The difference is that uh, Jordan Weaver is just a better bar worker than Ali Raisman. The men's leader is Mikolo Kuksenkov, and we continue to watch Danelle Leva and John Orozco to see if they can somehow come back and be part of the uh, podium picture. Orozco's coming up, Danelle Leva, Right there, wrapped around his favorite towel. Don't count him out. Don't count him out. He is world champion on the next event that he's going up on, and he is a world championships finalist. I thought he should have won a medal in 2010 on high bar. So these are his two best events, and he is great on both of them. A lot of times when you're nervous, you yawn. You know, he actually needs a 15-3-3. 15-5-3-3. Now here's quite a story for you. This is the American alternate, Gabby Douglas from Virginia Beach. Those scores, and she is just an alternate. She is not officially in the competition. She has been given this chance to compete today, largely to give her some exposure and some experience. And guess what? She's beating everybody. By seven tenths of a point, and yes, she may not be in this meet, but you cannot tell that to this little girl right here, Gabby Douglas, or her coach, Chow, great coach of Sean Johnson in 2008, Liang Chow. He is a tremendous, tremendous coach and has just turned this little girl's world around. Rebecca Tunney from Great Britain. And this has been an eye-opener for this young lady competing here at the American Cup. In this arena, it's all about experience and getting as much as they can from her as she hopes to qualify for her team in London. And it's possible, but, uh, you know, when you compare the maturity level, not just the age-wise, but competitive-wise, with what you see from the, the three Americans that are essentially on the floor today and the two Romanians, it just is... Uh, it's not even in the same park. Experience is one thing, but for Rebecca, what visibly is missing are, you know, the, the form errors. See right there, and... That's a full point. Boy, Elfie, you just wonder. You know, the uh, O2 Arena, or the North Greenwich Arena, as it's going to be known mm -hmm. during the Olympics, will just be roaring like no arena has ever roared for Great Britain's gymnasts, and you just wonder, what is it going to do to them? Is it going to crush them, or is it going to lift them up? Oh, goodness. This is tough. And it appears that this building, mm -hmm. <laughs> the most famous in the world, is somewhat eating her up. She was the British junior national champ last year. She actually competed in January at the test event, even though the British women qualified the fall, uh, earlier in October at the World Championships in Tokyo. She's just looked very timid here, very scared. I think 
when they were marching in, she was just amazed at the crowds. And I'll tell you, a, yeah. per a performance like this in such a prestigious event, this is going to be hard to overcome, not just at this American Cup, but she is, she's going to be a bit damaged after this competition. It's going to take a lot a, yeah, little, a lot of work to get her back on track, if that's possible, for her training, 2012. Her training partner is Beth Tweddle, of course, who's so well-known in Britain. Hopefully, oh. help her out with the coming months. That's devastating. Yeah, she's going to need uh, some Dr. Phil. So much business. Yeah. The sporting effort of the nation when they're getting ready to have an Olympic Games. We saw it in Australia. We saw it in Greece. We saw it in China to a major degree. And we will see it in London. Here's Marcel Nguyen of West Germany. He could actually take the lead here, a little under 15 to do that. Yeah, he's good everywhere. He is solid. And he's actually capable of doing a little bit of a step, almost identical to what we saw from Daniel Purvis. And then another leg separation. And right there again. What did I tell you, Al? It, this contest is not over for Danelle Leva. He's more than seven tenths back, but... Marcel can do one of the most difficult dismounts in the world, but he does not today. A little bit rattled. Can actually do that with a full twist, but I don't know if you I don't know if you call that a miss, but you call that that really wasn't good. And that could mean an opening. If Danel Leva just does what he's capable of, things could be changing rapidly in New York. to get all sappy, but the fabric of New York is built upon millions and millions of immigrants over the decades who've come here. There's a plaque on the Statue of Liberty that talks about it. And his family was yearning to be free, and they came to the United States. And now this is just a, as good as it gets in terms of an American story trying to get to the Olympics. Danelle Leva is the world champion. He needs a 15.533 to take the lead in the American Cup. What was the score in the world championships? A 15.633. Here we go. Really difficult right there and phenomenally done. Has an unconventional parallel bar routine. Does a lot of this under bar work and watch this. Oh boy. That was a mistake right there. He was supposed to come into the middle of the bar but not a disaster. He covered up very well. His dismount. Mm. A small hop. I don't think he's going to get that number, but he is going to be dangerously close to the top spots. Well, the two Americans have been battling back all day long. On the other, other side of a break, we'll find out if Danelle Leva's performance on the parallel bars was enough to either take the lead or put him on the podium of the AT&T American Cup. Still to come. The Bronx is John Orozco. Danelle Leva needed a score the likes of which won him a world championship on parallel bars. Not today, not in New York, a 14.966. He will remain in fourth, which is not where you want to be. Still to come, his American teammate, John Orozco, who's been trying to overcome a major mistake on the pommel horse, and that has been very difficult for him, too. He's just doing this for himself at this point. 6th place. This is the fifth of six apparatus for the men. And he has the ability, like I said, to move up as well. He's great on parallel bars and a world finalist on his next event, high bar. Very difficult. Has he heard his status as far as 
the American team going to London? Um, no, he hasn't heard it, but uh, if you're a gymnastics expert in the U.S., you know, unless he gets hurt, that this kid, he's already got his ticket punched, in my opinion. A lot of people get mad at me for saying that, but they all know it's the truth. Ironically, what does it for him is his abilities on pommel horse, which was his almost Great death now today, but, and that's what Orozco typically does so well. I've never known a person who had better air sense in the sport of gymnastics than John Orozco. An elite gymnast from the Bronx. That's a tale we hadn't heard before. We'll take a break and come back as we head to the final rotation in the AT&T American Cup. Whoever wins the American Cup going into the Olympics wins that gold medal. The American Cup just gives you this confidence going into the Olympics. The American Cup, Madison Square Garden, that's where everything started. It was such a unique experience for me. American Cup has real special meaning to me. It truly was the stepping stone to make it to that Olympic team. It's always something to be part of that group of gymnasts that have won the American Cup here at Madison Square Garden. And once again with Madison Square Garden as the backdrop of the AT&T American Cup, everyone wonders, is Jordan Weber going to follow the path blazed by those other great gymnastics champions? She is the reigning world champion. She is on the scoreboard in the lead, but you know what? There's an amazing story that's not being recognized by everyone because Gabby Douglas from Virginia Beach is not really part of the event, but she's part of the event. <laughs> and right now, she is the leader that no one sees on the scoreboard. And by a lot, Tim Daggett. Yes, by seven tenths of a point. And yes, she is not officially in this competition, but she is being judged by the exact same rules and the exact same judges that are evaluating both Jordan Weber and Ali Raisman. It's and such a win-win situation for Gabby. And this is the beam routine that put her in the lead just a few minutes ago. You know, right from the first workout here in New York, we knew there was something very different about Gabby. And I have to say, I credit that world championship experience she says herself, it's, I just have so much more confidence in myself to know what I'm capable of doing. So Tim, obviously noticing what's happening here are Jordan Weber and Ali Raisman. And their coaches. <laughs> and how are they taking this? Uh, they don't like it. <laughs> that's, that's all there is to it because although there probably are only two or three people in the arena outside of those folks that know what's going on here, they are blatantly aware of it because she has shown such maturity. I talked with Marta Caroli right before the event and I said, wow, Gabby Davis, she Douglas, she has looked so amazing. And she says, I know. Everybody has been telling me yeah. she is very something. So how do you explain why she is in this position given this chance? Well, I think it was an opportunity. It's, a, it's the American Cup and, uh, you know, you can kind of somewhat wiggle with the rules a little bit and they just wanted the opportunity to give someone like Gabby Davis the, the chance to come out on this floor, gain some uh, reputation and uh, it, so far it is a home run for her. So still to come we will see Gabby Douglas on floor exercise. Her name is not on the leaderboard. Just imagine she is above Jordan Weber. Based upon what USA Gymnastics has seen on resumes, they place two American gymnasts in the AT&T American Cup. Because it is an American event, they have the opportunity to add an extra gymnast to get some experience and let the judges see her on an international stage. Well, Gabby Douglas has grabbed this opportunity and hugged it with everything she's got. And she if was 
officially included in the event would be the leader by seven tenths of a point. This is floor exercise. This ends here. What could be unbelievable day. Oh, and she is out of bounds. Wow. I'm telling you, one year ago, if she was in this exact situation, she would have been paralyzed by fear. The growth in this young lady is absolutely spectacular. Leg went up in the corner just as she started her tumbling pass. Another out of bounds. Yeah, that's that's a a silly mistake. Wow! wow. <laughs> Will we see that smile in London? Yeah. Oh, I would say that if she is healthy, there's almost no way that she's not on that team if she's healthy. And I say that predominantly because Team USA, if they have a weakness, it's on the uneven bars, and she is world-class bars. She's getting a few more Facebook requests today, for sure. Congratulations to her coach, Ling Chow. He obviously knows what he's doing as well. We've seen him in so many of these competitions over the years. Gabby Douglas. And I'm sure a lot of people are wondering in the arena here at Madison Square Garden, why is her name not up on the leaderboard? Yeah, they don't flash the score at all. Only the top two from a country can compete in this championships per FIG World Cup rules. Jordan Weber has the lead officially, and it's by half a point over her teammate, Allie Raisman. On the men's side, Mikola Kuksenkov is trying to win the first ever American Cup for Ukraine. And there's Daniel Purvis, who's right behind him. This is a matter of hundreds of a point between these two. So this last rotation is going to be as dra dramatic as it gets. And there's another nervous yawn from one of the competitors. We will have... Gabby Douglas' score as we continue here, live on NBC from New York City. We're back as Gabby Douglas was given a 14.7, her lowest score of the day. Still was well received. It's been an unbelievable day for her. The U.S. alternate may actually finish first. John Orozco, sixth after the fifth rotation. Fighting all day right now on the high bar. Where does this fit in his uh, strength o meter? Oh, it's it's probably his best event because this is where he made a world championship final at the last world. There's a lot of super difficult right here. Look at that. Hey, Nastia, that's named after your dad. Hmm. That's a Lucan. Look at his form. Legs are locked together. You know, John, he looked a little bit sluggish yesterday, and in warm-ups he looked really not himself, but I just, I just thought it was, you know, conserving a little bit. But since that fall, he has been fabulous. Dismount. Very good routine from Orozco. He would love to have a do-over on the pommel horse. What'd you learn about him today, Tim? Oh, I, exactly what I knew. 
that that he is a very tough competitor. I think he just got he got a little unlucky and was a little bit off balance. And sometimes, you know, if if your knuckles hit the pommel as opposed to the palms of your hand. You know, it's, it doesn't matter who you are, pretty much, you're and, coming off. And one of the things he told us that he learned in Tokyo, competing for so many weeks and so many days of competition, was dealing with adversity. And he took that with him today, I believe. Still to come from Madison Square Garden, the conclusion. Can Jordan Weaver nail down the event that has paved the way toward Olympic gold for three great women before her? The AT&T American Cup is brought to you by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. And by U.S. Bank, member FDIC. Live pictures from the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden in New York. I'm Al Troutwig along with Tim Daggett, Elfie Schlegel, and Andrea Joyce patrolling the floor. The women are on the floor exercise. This is Australia's Georgia Simpson, seventh now after the third ball. rotation. We're going to see the bottom half of the draw for the next few minutes. Then there'll be a warm up for those who are going to try and contend for a championship here on both the men's and the women's side. And Georgia actually a taller gymnast. She towers over many of the competitors on the floor. Looks more like a rhythmic gymnast. Yeah. Has but, beautiful lines, but great she does, flexibility. Yes. And, and great dance, great, you know, artistic expression. Yeah, it struggles somewhat in the acrobatic skills, but absolutely lovely to watch, especially her choreography. Now on floor exercise for Australia, Georgia Simpson. Australia also earning a team berth. They will be in London, a full team. Al, anytime you hear dire straits at a gymnastics yeah. meet, it's a good thing. Yeah, really pretty choreography. You could see she was still nursing that knee injury. It made it a little bit difficult on those landings. They were a little bit short. And of course, it's about sticking those tumbling past landings. The judges are being so strict with those. And you know, good experience for her. You know, it's uh, like I said, you know, she's on the floor with some of the very top gymnasts in the entire world in a prestigious competition in this arena. We'll be seeing her in a couple more weeks. She's staying put. Many of her teammates will be joining her. Still to come in the upper half of the draw, America's Jordan Weaver trying to win the American Cup, which is, as we've shown, the perfect setup for Olympic success. Only Tim Daggett messed it up. He did it after <laughs> he won the gold medal. <laughs> Allie Raisman in second, trailing by half a point. Nice little touch, the American flag on the sleeve. Yep. This is Oleg Vernayev of Ukraine. He was in fifth after the fifth rotation. A really up and down day for Oleg. But as I said, he is a young gymnast. And he is someone 
I'm certain he'll be on the team for Ukraine in 2012 unless an injury occurs, but his years are going to be 2014, and then I'm sure he's thinking a lot about Rio as well in 2016. We are with you to the conclusion of this event, golf top of the hour. Now on horizontal bar for Ukraine, Oleg Vietnamia. Ukraine has had in its history some of the best high bar workers. They fly high on this event. Right off the top. Ooh, that was fingertips. He just barely got his hands on the bar. I asked him if he was going to do a super hard dismount he's capable of, a triple twisting double layout. And he was surprised I knew he had competed it before. And he was like, no, no, no. And he kept pointing to his nose. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, says, I land on my nose. <laughs> Good call. Well, a, a good routine, but certainly not going to move him up very much. So that's the bottom half of the draw. You hear the tones in the background. That's the beginning of warm-up for the leaders in the AT&T American Cup. Now, a few minutes ago, we watched Danelle Leva. And... Danelle Leva was not really able to help himself out that much. He was in fourth. He still is in fourth, trailing by .567, which means he's likely off the podium. But after he was done with the parallel bars, this is the scene, Tim, that we saw with his dad, Yin Alvarez. What is he doing there? Well, he's saying that they didn't count an element, and it was four tenths. In addition, Dennis McIntyre, he's the equivalent of Marta Caroli. He walks over to Steve Butcher, who is the highest rated judge. He's on the FIG te technical committee. And they discussed it and uh, no resolution, no, no score change. So as he gets ready for the high bar, his final rotation, let's just wrap this up with Andrea Joyce. Andrea? Well, yeah, Tim has it right. It was an element that Yin really thought that he should have gotten credit for. He called it an 11th element, which they're only allowed 10 elements on the P-bars. But in the confusion, he went over to the technical committee. He was really just couldn't let it go. It went on for about 20 minutes. But when I asked him if he was satisfied after they showed him how the scores worked out, he gave me the biggest shrug of the shoulders you could possibly have seen from Yin Alvarez. Well, Tim, we just saw a little bit of a scary moment in the warm-up. Now he never catches that in warm-up. <laughs> never, ca never, never catches it. But that skill before it, I don't know if you remember, the skill before it, he smashed his face on the high bar in the all-around finals at the World Championships. It was right here. Super difficult skill, and he lets go way early. Uh, oh, gosh, that's difficult to watch. Yeah, I've seen it a bunch of times. Yeah. And just lets go way too early in front of the bar, and there is Jeez. nothing you can do. And I'll tell you, Al, that has happened to me. I've hit my chin on the bar on a release like that, and it feels oh. like you've been just... I, I, there goes the tooth. It's the tooth out. I talked to his mom a couple of months ago, and I asked her about that, and she said it was the hardest thing that she's ever gone through. She said at that moment she got up, went to the bathroom, had to vomit because she was so upset and said, Danelle, Danelle, please, please be done. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> How long do you keep something like that, Tim? I mean, I guess everybody's different, but do you ever forget it? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And um, he, he's done a good job. Um, going up there and, and keeping it close enough to get the fingers around the bar, but he will never forget hitting his chin on the bar like that. Well, this is one of the biggest moments in the gymnastics life of Daniel Purvis. Just 21 weeks away from an Olympic Games in his home country, a chance to win the American Cup. He's a 
up on high bar and you hear in the background some of the uh, the music played for the women's floor exercise. We'll be keeping an eye on everything. And he doesn't do some of the really big releases that we'll see from like Danelle. But he's but, clean. Exactly. And right to a hand scan on that. Just like the uneven bars, if you do those pirouetting skills like that one, they want to see you top it off in a perfect hand handstand position. A little bit of a leg separation there. Oh. You know, this routine, it actually opens the door for a lot of deductions. He is not, see that right there? That's a three-tenth deduction where he caught that last release. And that's hard for the audience to see. It's hard for them to pick up on those details where they're not landing in a perfect handstand. And we talk about that so much, as you said, Tim, on women's uneven bars, and it carries over with men's high bar. But, but that was a, a very good routine for Daniel. However, it opens the door. Those judges can scratch pen to paper. Up now, floor exercise, Jordan Weaver. She's the leader, but remember, the alternate who's not really in the total competition, Gabby Douglas, is in front of her. So just to salvage whatever pride she wants to get out of this, the world champion needs a 15.4. Which is a very big number on floor exercise. For the women, it is the lowest scoring event by far. I think that Jordan scored like a 14.8 in the all-around finals at the World Championships on floor exercise. So that is a huge number to accomplish. Now her start value is around roughly a 6.2, but you, as you said, Tim, you have to be spot on. And when it comes to those tumbling passes and how they want the women to land, right. there is just no room for error. Well, I cannot remember the last time I saw anybody Shit. score uh, get less than one point off in execution, but you know, Jordan is one that she has told me, I like watching the scores. I like to know exactly where I am, what I need to get. And believe it or not, I believe she knows what she needs not only to hold off Alexander Raceman, but also to jump ahead of Gabby Douglas. She's got the green flag. But no pressure, Jordan. The last two Olympic champions from the United States won this in the year of their games in Madison Square Garden. major wrong there. No, no, there was only one she took error. Out yeah, she on her triple twist, she took a, a couple little steps, but very solid. The third tumbling pass took out one little element after that two and a half twist. Now on high bar for USA. Leva 
needs a 15.035 on the high bar to take the lead from Great Britain's Daniel Purvis. Well, Danelle says that high bar is his best event. His dad has always maintained parallel bars was. Yeah, he thought if he would have won the gold medal on any event, it would have been on high bar first over P bars. And I'll tell you why he's so good on this event. He is just crazy, out of control hard. It'll start right here. That's the move that he took a shot on at Worlds. Check this out. Watch him throw his arms out to the side. Now this is his Takamoto little spread. It's one of the most difficult routines being done. Watch that. Yeah. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Pat clapping away. Two flips, two twists. And it could be a ball game. I'm not sure it's a come from behind anything just yet, but it's a nice come from behind no matter what. No question. Thrilling. Jordan Weber, 15.133, so she's in great position to win this AT&T American Cup. And right after you talk to her about how great it is to win the American Cup, comes the question, but what about Gabby Douglas, who had a better score than you? Here's her teammate, Allie Raisman. To take the lead from Jordan Weber, she'd have to be unreal. And she's capable of some unbelievable tumbling passes that I'm sure before she's performed this one, most people in the world would have said that this pass is not possible. Wow. <laughs> First time that New York has grooved to Hava Nagila. And that was a huge floor routine. As I said, the tumbling is out of this world. She's a world's bronze medalist. I do not believe that that is going to be able to surpass Jordan Weber at this point in time. You're looking at the leader, Mikola Kuksenkov. He needs better than a 15.366 for the lead, and that is because Danelle Leva was given a huge 15.933 on the high bar to take the lead. Are you surprised at that? I um, mean, that's a big number. He had a couple of little places where eh, the judges, he definitely gave him a shot to take the deduction, but like I said, I think he's the most exciting high bar worker in the world. Two challengers to go. He's got a big release coming up right here. Very cleanly done. The 
but it's those pirouetting skills that that one excellent. Got to land in the handstand, and that one was way past. Mm -hmm. That one as well. He's got a lot of difficulty, but it's really not even in Danelle's league. Or the same excitement level. Yeah. You saw how Danny's routine just took the crowd off their seats, and they just don't understand this one. A great gymnast, without a doubt. Been consistent my book, all day. My book has Danell Leva finishing ahead of him. I do not think that he should get that score. Again, the number is 15.366. Luxenkov is giving off the body language like he's done enough. We are still waiting for Allie Raisman's score. And I think it's going to be a higher number than we just saw from Jordan Weber, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, that, that tumbling was just out of the world. My I, goodness. I, when I first saw that she was doing that opening tumbling run, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. What are you, what are you thinking about? She you can't been, do that. She had been going out of bounds during the workouts as well. I couldn't understand if she could keep it in the confines of the floor exercise mat, but she did. There is one more challenger to go, Marcel Nguyen of Germany. Again, the number for Ali Raisman, 15.633 to take the lead from Jordan Weaver. And Kuksenkov needs a 15.366. And Yuen needs a very large 15.565 to take the lead. So a lot of math going on. <laughs> Kuksenkov does not get the number. Yeah, that's right. They got it right. They got it right. Danel Leva is still the leader right now with one more challenger to go. 15.2 for Kuksenkov. A long delay on the score for Ali Raisman. Wen gets set to mount the high bar. Gets the flag from the officials. Boy, this has turned out to be something uh, very dramatic here. Yeah, it, it, like I said at the beginning of the competition, the men's field, really, almost top to bottom, is world class. He's a former German national champion. Legs came apart right there. Right there again. Denel says, keep doing that. Here comes his big release. Nicely done. Got another one right here. Wow. Oh. And that right there, that giant where he bent his elbows, believe it or not, and that separation right there. This is hard, and that is another huge error. And Danelle Leva comes back and is your 2012 American Cup champion. This will not be anywhere near enough to get it done. Ali Raisman's score, by the way, a 15.433. That will put her second. That was a first place smile for Jordan Weber. It's the United States 1-2 in the AT&T American Cup. And speaking to the depth of what they can take to London in the Olympics 21 weeks from now, Gabby Douglas didn't win the competition, but she had the highest score of anyone. So these are some of the faces we'll be seeing again. Jordan Weber to the World Championships for a gold medal. And now the American Cup, just like some of the greats before her. She is with Andrea Joyce. And Jordan Weaver just took the biggest sigh of relief I think I've seen from you. Your first competition since winning the World Championship. What was it like for you out there winning your third American Cup? Were there a little bit of nerves and pressure? There was a little bit of nerves, you know, especially coming off such a great World Championships. But basically I want to come back out here and just do as well as I did the year before. And then, um, you know, just get back in the competition. And how about Gabby Douglas, not technically competing here, but as part of sort of an exhibition as an alternate, what do you think this says about the Americans, and what do you think about what she did? 
I think it kind of shows all the other countries, you know, look what we can do. We had three huge vaults, so that's one thing. And then, you know, we're just really strong all around, so. Very quickly, it's been impossible not to hear this over and over this week. Mary Lou, Carly, and Nastia, all of them won the American Cup and then went on to win the all-around at the Olympics. Where do you put that information in your head? I definitely put it in the back of my mind, and I keep it, I use it to motivate me in my training, but there's definitely still a lot more hard work. Um, you know, I had a couple mistakes, so I'm excited to get back in the gym and fix those things. All right, congratulations. Good luck down the road. Thank you. Back to you, Al. Okay, Andrea. So, the United States takes it, both the men's and the women's side. Weber, Raisman, and Jordak of Romania, one, two, and three. And Danelle Leva with an amazing come-from-behind finish. In two weeks, it's the Kellogg's Pacific Rim Championships. Up next, Tiger Woods faces the bear trap for the first time when he headlines the field at the Honda Classic next on NBC. For Tim Daggett, Elfie Schlegel, and Andrea Joyce, I'm Al Trowick. Congratulations, Donnell. You earned it. And Jordan Weber takes the AT&T American Cup. Good afternoon from Madison Square Garden.